so the next thing that I wanted to mention here um, has to do with the use of a, a concept that's linked in with, with what we've uh, just said, and specifically objects. So we've noted that values can hold, when we have a value, it can hold objects of a certain, it can, it can hold elements of, 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 of a certain type, possible elements of the type. So if we have a value that's a double, it can hold different double position values. The elements conceptually of each double. Um, if we have a type of ints, it can hold one and three and minus two, et cetera. Uh, a double would hold 3.14 and 2.71 and, and you know, uh, 6.3 or whatever. Um, one of the broad universes of possible values, something you, you, we also use all the time, are values that could informally be sometimes described as holding objects. But that's a misnomer because they actually don't hold objects, they hold references to objects. And I wanna talk about this, and I wanna talk about the relation between objects and classes. So this too is going on a swirling all around us when we use any logic, okay? So when we create an any logic model, what we're actually doing is creating, defining classes. The theory of personhood, the theory of personness, that is defined. I've, I've mentioned it several times in this boot camp. Um, uh, we're defining a class um, that describes what personhood is, so person. And then there'll be many particular instances of the class. We'll, we'll define personhood. And then there'll be many particular persons who, who, who exemplify or exhibit or or instances of, or examples of person, right? So we may define personhood and then there'll be many particular people, a population of particular people. They're all persons. They're all examples of this. It's almost like we're defining a cookie cutter and using it to make a hundred cookies. And all those cookies have the shape of the cookie cutter, but they differ in their particulars, right? Some of them we put, sprinkles on and some we we based with oil and some we some we you know put frosting on or whatever and but they they all have the basic shape of the cookie cutter so it's like a class is like a cookie cutter and we use it to make many particular cookies and all those cookies share the basic features of the cookie cutter but they differ in their particulars and so it is with with these classes, and you know, it's a common it's a common sense notion, right? We have the class of orange, and then we have many particular oranges, and they differ in their particulars, but they, but they're all characterized by orangeness, orangeness, right? Um, and it's a very useful note. Now, in any law. We are all the time using classes and defining classes and objects. So we define the person class to define personhood. And we define, and it turns out option lists are also classes. And by the scenes and the, the associated with what are called the enums. A main is a class that only ever has one instance in our model. Person is a class that will have generally many instances in person, right? Um, so these are classes we're defining. And it is possible to actually go explicitly add. You say new add Java class. And the truth is sometimes in our models we, we, we do that. It's comparatively rare. Most models I've uh, used, you know, 95% don't have explicit Java class, but you can do it. And if you go and you find a book or take a class in Java, you'll learn you're defining Java classes. One of the most common things you do, or the most fundamental things that you do. Um, uh, here we're we're doing it in any logic in this interface. So this agent 
type is a class. If you go and you look secretly behind the scenes, it's an agent class. How would I do that, by the way? Folks are kind of growing up and, and you probably won't be scared if I show you something. So if I go to a bit of place where I can add code here for person and I do control J, um, it will actually, actually, there's a better way to do it. Um, you can do it through that and actually bring it to that place in the code. But you can also view it in the Java editor. Now the Java editor, you can't edit it. You can't change it. But you'll notice it says it's a class. It's a class, okay? And by the way, it says it extends agent, meaning this class person is an agent. It has all the features of agents, all the properties of agents, all the characteristics, all the invariants, all the basic things we know about agents also hold for person. So we can treat it like an agent, it turns out. And if you go and you look, that is true as well for home here. You go look at that, that's also an agent. It's also true for you know, school. That too is an agent. So um, these are classes. So first and foremost classes, it turns out there's sub, subtypes of, of agents, subclasses. We'll, we'll get to what that means in, in a bit later, but they're all classes. Classes like a mole generally passed as a particular object. I guess those here in the classroom probably won't like the year. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so um, so commonly we define this and, and then we use it. And I'm gonna skip this over, but um, I think it's a fairly intuitive idea. We have these classes all the time. And when we have an object, there are certain things we can do for it. Just like with the double, we can add it, we can divide it, we can subtract it and so on, multiply it, take the negative of it, you know, negate it. Um, so it is with objects. Objects have a certain set of things that they support. One of the things is reading fields. These are, these are properties within the object. And all the things that we've been dealing with in any logic are fields. So, so within a person here, a color, it turns out is a field. Initial smoking state is a field. Birth time is a field. Current age is a field. Heart disease hazard is a field. I mean, at a technical Java level, they're all what's called fields. Now they're of different sorts. I mean, some are variable really are meant to be updated over time. Some are, are parameters, which we should stay away from updating over time, but they're all fields. And this thing is gonna have other fields too, uh, like those involving this oval and its connection. And when I say fields, they're sort of properties of the object that we can ask about, and we'll see how to do that. Let's use the dot. Remember that dot? Say this dot, that, and that's, it, it'll get out that information. We could set the value of the field. We can call methods on it, perform some task, a command, or query some information, compute a value, it's a query. And we can create many objects. So, so here we go. Here we have, if I can be sloppy and I can say, here we have object A. But what I really mean is we have a reference to an object A. We, we're, we're referring to an object A. A is not actually the object, it's, it's a reference to the object. And, and I could say, what's your connections number? And it returns the number of connections. Or I could say, hey, turn me into a string, turn you into a, like, turn into a, like, give me your string representation. Give me, give me a, a description as a string of you. And that's what we saw earlier. But automatically did that when we did the plus, the plus thing. Yeah. Um, we could ask all of its connections. We get a, 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 a list of all its connections. We could say, hey, you connect with this other agent. I can give it 
an agent to connect to. I could say, you connect with you. And now they'll have a network connection. That's really useful. It's really useful for dynamic networks. Or I could say, disconnect from. I could say, like, you know, they're, they're now separated. They're no longer friends. They're separated. Um, one, this one doesn't refer to that one. Maybe they've changed location. They're no longer co located. Uh, or I could say, disconnect from all. Uh, or I could say, get me your connected agent. Turns out there's huge repertoire I could have. There's hundreds of these things that I can do. And if you go into the AnyLogic documentation, um, if we go help here, and we say AnyLogic help, um, and I'll drag what I have here over here, um, uh, you can go and go look at what's called the API reference. I mean, you can also search things directly. But the API reference will tell you like all these different things that I can I can do. Um, so the AnyLogic uh, engine will will tell me I've, I've just got uh, tons of different possibilities. And some of them we've seen like just recently agent list. So if I have an agent list, um, it's an agent list of agent. And here are all the things I can do with it. I can fill it from a table. I can ask, does it contain something? I can find examples of something in there according to a predicate. I can, I can get its owner. I can get environment which it's located. I can, I can go one by one through things in it. I can find the maximum of certain numeric fields in it. All these sort of things. Or I could go into uh, agent here. Um, so here's agent by clicking on this. Here's the class agent. Um, and you can see, get, start to get a sense of all the things I can do. I can get its color, I can get its name, I can get its networks, I can get its position, I can get its location, I can get its latitude, I can find out where it is in X and Y, I could ask if it's moving, I can move it to a place. These are like, and you can see this just goes on and on and on. Um, and then it will give particular detail on these things. It'll say, you know, um, uh, what is get name? Returns the name of the agent, the name of the instance of its owner object with the index in square brackets. It's like population 76 for replicated objects. Um, get full name, um, you know, turn it in, or give me your string, um, issue a warning, all, all these different things. Okay. So um, turns out that agents, have certain things that they can do, just like double have certain things they can do, or or uh, you know integers, etc. Um, one thing they can do is tell like, who's your daddy? It could say like, who's my owner? I could say like to uh, to an agent, tell me my owner. Tell me you know who. Um, who owns me or who, who contains me? And that's, it, this is an example get of name sort of thing. I can refer to it, I can refer directly because it gives me a nice thing, a nice hint for that or, or it gives me this for free to refer to it. But if I ask for this dot get owner, it will also give me name above me. Main is my owner, I'm in name, okay. Um, so these things can be strung together. And you don't tend to see this quite as much these days, but it's still definitely around quite a lot. So if I have a reference to an agent and I say, hey, get my connected agent at index two. That's my third connected agent because it starts at zero, one, two. Um, and then turn them into, and, and so that gives a reference to an agent other agents want to my, my connection three, um, connection index two. Um, and then I turn them into their string. I get their name. Uh, I print out the name of, or it will, will return the name, a reference to a string, which is the name of the third. Um, or I could get their first connected agent and then get the number of connections for that agent. Um, and all of these are, I say, we have an agent, but we actually have reference. 
um, called A. Okay. A may be a variable, it was a reference that was there. Okay, so I want to make this distinction between a class and an object. A class would be something like person, home, school, workplace, service dog, whatever, mule deal. This is a theory of personhood, a theory of homehood or a theory of service hood. Um, that's defined in a class that defines it. It's like the cookie. Um, but then there's many instances of the class, many particular people. Those are the objects. So there's the class and the object. And we say that the objects are instances of the class, just like those oranges out there are instances of orange. They're, they're specific oranges that are representative of diverse representatives of the or, orange class, the class of all oranges. Okay, so uh, there's a class and it has many objects that are instances of it that are sort of particular instantiation. Okay, um, so. Um, there are times where we want to deal with things about the class as a whole, not about the instances. We want to deal with the class. And I won't get into it in detail. It used to be somewhat more prominent, but there's this thing called static, which is really confusing to call get out to use because we're dealing with dynamic modeling. But basically it's referring to something with the with the class. It's not like so if we have many persons, they all share this lookup table this lookup table, and therefore it's static. We don't, each person doesn't need a separate instance of this lookup table. Each person doesn't need a separate one. No, there's one shared one, shared across all persons. And, and so we call it a static thing, meaning it's a property of a person class, not of each person. Generally, like when we define things here, um, we have uh, birth time, that's, characteristic of this particular person, initial smoking state. That is a characteristic of this particular person. Color is an aspect of this particular person. But there may be certain things um, that are, you know, in common across all persons. Maybe it's the relationship between age and fertility, or maybe it's the relationship between age and risk of developing heart disease or what have you. And we don't need that for every person. We need a color separately for every person. We don't need this relationship, you know, uh, between, and maybe it's a bad example, but uh, there may be a general relationship that we, we have. Um, okay, so um, in Java, variables hold values. And um, we said before, there's many specific types of of values um, or of, of types of um, variables in Java. Um, there's one that's explicitly in any logic called variables, but there's parameters and local variables and static variables. These are all called variables in a Java sense. So the Java notion of variable is much broader than any logic. Um, but really, when we have values, when we, when we have a, a variable, for example, holding a value, it comes in two different types. Uh, you know, there's two broad sort of um, in, uh, two broad sort of situations. One where it holds a primitive value, so it's like an int, a double, a float. These are built-in things that Java has built in. It knows exactly all about them. It's part of the Java language. But the other thing is actually it holds an, uh, a reference to an object, to some particular object, okay? or to null, which means I don't have a reference to that object. I'm of that type. I know I'm going to be a reference to a person, but I don't have one right now. And so we call it null. It's like n, n slash l. There's no particular value of that. Okay. Um, that's the that's the idea. So a lot of our variables actually point to objects. Um, this is very common. My connections point to to different objects. So we say they're the references to different objects, for example. If I had a parameter here that said, who's my mother, I would, um, I would uh, have a reference to mother. 
Okay. Um, so for example, maybe I'll, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this. This is literally going to take a minute. And I think you'll get the concept. I'm going to add into here a reference to um, my mother. Here we are. Here we go. Ready? Here it is. My mother. What, get, what sort of type is my mother going to be? Guess what? If I'm a person, my mother is going to be a what? Person. It's going to be a person. Good, good call. And, um, and now, if I, if, if this woman, at, represented by this person, gives birth, who's the mother going to be of the baby that's born? If, if, if a person is giving birth to a baby, who's the mother of that baby? That person. Yeah, so it's going to be this. It's going to be this. So, so remember, when I add someone to the population, adding the baby to the population, adding a baby. And the last bit of information that's needed is, who's the mother? And I'm saying, I'm the mother. OK, well, <laughs> tell my wife that. But um, so I'm adding this to the population, right? Um, I'm the mom. Um, OK, there we go. Uh, and okay, I should really turn the camera so people could see who's, who's the mom. Um, OK. Um, there we go. OK. Um, and then the other place we have to specify it is in Maine, because Maine needs to specify the value of all the parameters. Um, oops, wrong Maine. Um, yes. Um, sorry, sorry, in the population. Um, and the mother here, for all the people who are created initially in the population, I don't know what, who their mother is going to be. So I'm going to give it null. I'm going to give it null because I don't know who their mom is. Going to be. I don't know who their mom was. They're starting in the model. I didn't. I didn't have their mom in the model, and now they are. Uh, and so, I, so they're there. And so I have to tell them, I don't know who your mother is. It's no particular person in the model. I'm going to say null. Okay. Now that I did this, if I run this model, what we'll find is that at any given time, um, mother is a field referring to my mother. It's. It's a. And by the way, I should say it's it's, it's default value is probably not. It's, it's um, I, I should never, uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm not going to see it if they're added to giving birth. OK, so very commonly, one agent will refer to another agent. This agent is going to refer, ladies and gentlemen, to their mother. Now, at first, everyone's going to come into the model you know, initially, but oh. Okay, okay, can't open text file. Oh, yeah, because I, okay. But let's go browse the population. Text file is probably open in, there it is. It's open in, in Excel. Here it is. Who's my mother? My mother, no, uh, okay. Um, can we find someone whose mom is not null here? Someone who was born into the model. Well, let's let's run it out a little bit further. I said it yesterday to run for a shorter time. I'm going to run it for, I'm going to run it for 200 years. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, or actually, I'll run it. Yeah, fine. Um, fine. That that should be wrong. So now now people can refer to their mother, and I'm going to run it here and. I'll, I'll run it out. 200 years have passed. I go and I look at population numbers. And here's someone, oh, the mother died. Okay, so, so now it's population minus one. There was a mother in the population, but unfortunately she's passed away now. Um, so I'm looking for someone whose mother is still alive. That, that's with this. Well, I could go, oh, there, there we go. This person's mom is still alive. Eight person's mom. Person 18 has mom at location 14. Um, so, uh, you know, this person was born at time 115, and their mom was born presumably uh, earlier, yes, uh, at time 107. Okay. So, uh, early birth. 
Okay, so, so here we have a reference from one person to another um, that's occurring, okay? And um, uh, very commonly, um, you have a person referring to another um, through a, a value that, that holds a reference to another, another agent. So objects in Java all you know, hold properties or fields, we call them. Um, and here, all of these are fields of this object. If I referred to that, um, for example, if I here referred to my mother, I could actually say like this dot mother dot, and I could go see a whole lot of information. I could ask what was her birth time? What was her cessation time? What was her color? What was her heart disease hazard? I can refer to all these characteristics that. In fact, I could ask, who is her mom? Who is her mother? This dot mother dot mother, right? Um, I could ask my mother, who is she? I'd return this. That's a reference to my mom. That's going to come from this. And then I can ask for her mom. And I could ask for her mom. And I could ask for her mom, right? And so on. Now, if they get removed from the population, I'm not sure where to find them, but that's another matter. Um, uh, if they if they were living as long as mothers deserve to, um, forever, I mean, then um, we could find them. Okay, so objects can contain references to other objects. So here will be like my mother um, refers to another person. I'm this person, so this is a reference to me, maybe. Yes, to me. And my mother field points to another person. And I also have a name, you know, as another field. So, so when we think about like um, agents in in any logic, um, they. You know, at, a, at an abstract level, they, they look quite a lot like this. They have references to one another. Um, they have references to themselves. Several, several people could share the same mother, right? It's not like every person has a unique copy of their mother. No, no, no. They're all referring to the same mother. Hmm? Um, okay. So just um, moving on here. So you might have, you know, a given person refer to their boss, their mother, their boss, and their the head of their organization or something like that. They could have an income, which is a specific value. That's a primitive value. They can have an age, which is a primitive value, maybe 4.2. And they could have a sex. Um, and then they have a reference to name. So this is really what's going on, like in any logic. You have these references to other objects. And those references could be shared between different objects. Several people could share the same mother. Um, and when I call this, if I call this dot get main on an object or get owner, I just ask for its main, the main property, it will be referring to the main object. And I could go get that. And I could ask it to increment a count of people that have developed heart disease this week. We, we've seen that, right? So here, when I develop heart disease, um, uh, no, it's here, I ask for main. That's going to give me this reference to the main object. And then I say increment that. So it's like this has a field, just like these has, this has fields here. This will have a field called cumulative heart disease incident cases for month and it goes down. Is that okay? Okay, um, so there's a, a model that illustrates this rather well. So we don't have time to go into, but I, it's one of the many models I've given you. It's one of the most venerable of those models. Um, I think it was built you know, back in 2007 or something like that. Um, and it has you know, birth of babies and, uh, and uh, generally shows sort of demographic uh, turnover and connections, et cetera. Um, right. Um, okay. Uh, I, I should note that there might be um, many particular 
references to a given object. So again, several people might have the same mother. So they'll be referring to the same mom. Just because I assign a reference to a variable doesn't mean it makes a copy of that, that object. It just refers to the, to the thing. Um, so, um, you know, if, 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 if A and B are holding primitive values, like numbers, and I assign A to be equal to B. This thing here. Um, Got to keep this, this thing going. Um, if, if, I, if I assign A equal B, then this value is actually copied into A. That's for primitive values. Those are the built in values. In Think double, integer, float, you know. Uh, character, et cetera, but actually makes a copy. By contrast, if A and B hold references to an object, um, uh, what gets copied is the reference to the object. That, that much is true. The reference to the object is copied. So you, it helps to be remembering what A is not holding is the object. It's holding a reference to the object. The reference to the same object is copied from A, from B to A. So um, a used to hold a reference to some other object, or it held null, and now it holds a reference to the same thing that B referred to. So they both refer to this object. If you understand, that. they're both going to be now referring to the same object. It's not making a copy of that object. If this is a string foobar, they're both referring to the same darn string foobar. Um, although if it's read only, it, it, it really is an immaterial distinction. Really doesn't matter. Um, uh, so, you know, if 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 they're referring to the same object, and A goes on to modify this object by changing it, B will see that change. Right? Um, if that mother goes on to develop heart disease, um, both those children will have a mother that has heart disease. Right? Um, so, it kind of makes sense. So, so uh, we had talked about the types of values and. And that variables include, you know, hold values. Um, the type of a variable includes the sort of values that it can contain, or the sort of, I should really say, sort of values. Um, uh, so this should really say, i.e., values that it can contain. Um, and look at a variable's type will tell you, you know, how it can be used, what can be done with it. Yeah, I need to say something about arrays and other collections here. So these are very, very common. So Java supports the collections of values that are called arrays. Um, and, and those elements of the array can be found in different indices. So index zero, index one, index two. Java will traditionally just like C family languages in general um, start from zero. Um, now, arrays can come in one or more dimensions. The most common sort of one dimension, which is very common in any logic, but you can also get two dimensions. And if you have a genuine array, a true blue array, you could sort of refer to the, to the element at index 20 as a begin square bracket 20 end square. Like that. Um, this is another of referring to the last one and the, sort of the last of the connections. Um, A is referring to an array. An array looks basically like this. It, 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 it looks, oops, uh, it looks like this um, if it's an array of objects. Um, so you have a reference to this thing, it's an array. It, Holds a bunch of values, a fix, some fixed length. Arrays can't be directly easily extended. This is a difference between arrays and array lists. I'll come to that in a moment. This is an array, it's of some fixed length, in this case 10. And um, this is an array of objects, we can tell because each of these elements, maybe it's an array of references to person, because each of these things holds a reference to some object. Maybe this is a person, this is a person, this is a person, this is a person. Um, 
the way of drawing it, they're all to different people. All of them could refer to the same person. That's perfectly fine. They, they each, each of these cells, each of these indices holds a reference to some object. Okay? This is actually very, very common in any language. You have an array of, you know, um, community, community organizers in your model or whatever. You can have a 2D array. That's what this is. This is a 2D array, two-dimensional array. It has one dimension that's 100 across and another dimension that's 100 across. That's, this is what this looks like. So you actually have an array, any array, and each element of this array, each index, contains a reference to another array which holds values. And I haven't drawn all of them, but this would be like a 2D array of perfect. Each of these ones, these ones, all of them will have references to perfect. Okay. This is also quite reasonably common, reasonably common. Where you see this here, is, this is wandering elephants. And here, this is holding the altitude or the amount of vegetation at each point in a grid. And so it's 100 by 100 grid. Um, each of those 100 things, this way and this way, it's like 100 rows, 100 columns. And each of those patches has some vegetation. It's going to be similar for altitude. So this is very common. In, this, in that case, instead of pointing at something, this would just hold the double precision value, indicating the veget amount of vegetation. This would hold the double. OK, now there's another collection called um, uh, an array list. Okay, so this should not say array. Say array list. And array lists again are are like ultra common in any language, even more so than arrays. Um, so when I ask for, hey, you know, um, find my connections. Um, you know, if I were to say this dot get connections, and by the way, they're super common in Java. Um, this dot get connections, um, so uh, get connections. This is gonna okay. It's actually gonna return a list, but I think it's specifically an array list, not one type of list. But the basic deal is that it's a something a little bit like an array, except you can add things into it and delete things from it. Like you can extend it, have more things, more indices, more elements in it. Or you can remove them. Um, so array lists are are just like chalk block full of array lists or lists. Okay. Um, those are all my comments on classes, objects, and references. So again, to recap, um, we define classes all the time in 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 any logic. Um, uh, our person. We defined as a class, main is a class, home, uh, school, workplace here are classes. Those define like theories of personhood or, or other variants of the theories of service dog. And then we have instances of them, particular instantiations of them, particular representatives of them. You can use different terms for it that, that are particular examples of. This class, which is those oranges out there, are particular examples of orange or apples, or particular instantiations of apple. They're examples of the class apple, right? Um, same basic idea. Now, those are called objects. Those instantiations are called objects of the class. And in, in Java, this is one of the biggest distinctions, the most important piece of terminology. We have a class, and then we have objects. And those objects are instantiations of that class, instances. Of that. Now, now, we have references to those objects, which are a type of value. We have values that are primitive values, like doubles, ints, characters, those sort of things. Um, and then we have the rest. The vast majority that you'll manipulate, or very, very large majority, I'd say a majority that you manipulate are actually references to objects, and by extension, objects of a class. For example, you'll be referring to instance uh, to references to a to person. And 
we have those references circulating in the mother in, in the model, like this refers to my mother, the reference to a person, right? Um, within within Maine here, we look at Maine. This is a population that contains, it says contains a number of agents secretly. It's containing a bunch of references to agents. And uh, and we could have an array list or an array, which each point to agents. Some of them might point to the same agent at different indices, um, uh, but often they'll point to different agents. And, and, um, uh, and you know, we build up these data structures, they're called in any logic, uh, um, and in Java, like array, array lists that contain, contain these things or contain data. Um, uh, okay, so that's um, objects, references, and classes. Okay, um, and a, a reference to a, a class defines a type, and a reference to that type is, you know, be associated with the name of the type. So we say this is this variable holds a person, but it doesn't hold a, hold a reference. There's a big distinction because if I have two variables a and b and they and b holds holds a person and then i assign a to hold person it doesn't copy the person it just copies the reference to the same person so if b subsequently goes on and modifies that person like increments their age or their chronic diseases or whatever a will see that as well if they're referring to okay okay that was second big 